Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, to the channel IT Simplified. I hope you find these videos useful and uh, subscribing to the channel. In the series of WBD, in today's session, I'm here to show you how to deploy FS logics in one of the session hosts in our WBD host pool. But before I do that, uh, just a bit of background why you'll be needing it and why it is necessary. Now, when we talk about any RDS or WVD kind of environment in which the users have to come and access the resources, it is very important that uh, the user profiles are saved. So as the user, they bounce between multiple session hosts, they should not uh, lose their setting, the data should be saved. And that is where the FS logics will come into play. Uh, when we talk about FS logic, I think this was a company that uh, Microsoft bought in late 2018 and it has been an integral uh, integral part of uh, wbd deployment from the user profile management perspective so let me just take an example so as you can see that uh, wbd host pool on this diagram i have a three session host so say for example when a user comes and establish a connection say it's a user one Right, he does the stuff, right? He save uh, stuff on that uh, machine and he logs off. And then uh, maybe a couple of hours back or uh, next day he comes back, he wants to make sure that those uh, settings are safe. With FS logics, that will help you to dynamically attach those uh, VHD which has created through whatever destination you have configured and will come to that point uh, and uh, allow you to keep all those. So from user perspective, they're experience is good because they're not losing any data and they get the same experience even though they are moving between session to session. That is what FS logics will allow you to do. Now, from the perspective of saving these user profile, there are a couple of options. So when we talk about uh, uh, these uh, user profile, you can save this on uh, blob storage. Even Azure file storage. Netta files, that's also very popular. And even if you have a file server with storage space in it enabled, you'll be able to do that, right? So all these options are available for you in order to save those user profile or the VHDs which are created, which will be ultimately dynamically attached uh, to the user when he logs back. But for this demonstration, I'll be using the file storage. Now I've already configured this. I've already integrated this with my Windows Active Directory, provide all the necessary permissions that will be needed for the users and for the admin perspective. So that part I've already done. And if you don't know how to configure this, I have created a detailed video so you can go through uh, the playlist, how to integrate uh, the Azure file storage with Windows Active Directory. And actually, let me just show you quickly that uh, it is already enabled and it's in place. So I'm going to, ITSSA is the name of my storage account in which I already have a file share. If I can go under the configuration, you'll see that Active Directory is enabled. It means it's all integrated with my on-prem Windows Active Directory. So that thing I've already done. And as I said that I have made a detailed video of that and you can check that how to do it. So with that in place, let me go to one of my session hosts. So it is with the name ITS2. And you need to have a FS logic agent deployed on this. So I've already downloaded this file, which you can go and download from Microsoft website. Let me go inside this. So I'll go and open the uh, the file and the FS Logics app setup. So let me just go and click on this, accept the agreement, and click on the install button. So the setup was successful, so I can close at this stage. And the other thing that I need to do is now to make changes in the registry. So what I'm going to do is I'll open the registry editor. And I need to go to the H key local machine under software and you'll see the FS logic 
has appeared over here. So let me just go and uh, highlight this. And what I need to do is, is to create a new key with the name profiles. That created in the in this key, what I need to do is I need to create a D word entry with enabled and I have to give the value one for this, for this D word 32 bit value and click on okay. And the other entry I need to make is to create a multi-string value and it will be the VHD location where all these VHDs will be saved. So if I go inside this, it is asking for the value data and that I'll get because as I said that I've already configured the file storage. So if I can go to my storage account, which has already been integrated with my Windows Active Directory, I need to give the path. So if I can go under the file share, I have a file share with the name FS1. If I right click and go to the properties, this is the URL I can get. I just need to change it as per the server requirement. Let me go here and change this and give the exact path. Click on OK. You'll receive this error, so don't worry about it. It's pretty normal. That's what Microsoft says, so should be good. Click on the OK button and you can close this. And now I will recommend that you need to give a restart to this machine to make sure that uh, all these uh, registry entry has uh, has taken place. So just give it a restart to the machine. And now when the user are going to log back to the session host, to whichever session host, and uh, those profiles will be saved in the file share that we have created on the Azure File Storage site. So that is it. That is how you add uh, FS logic and configure that. And this needs to be done on all the session host. You can also create a, a GPU in order to push this across all the session host in your environment. But this will make sure that uh, as your users move from one session host to other one, those profiles will be dynamically attached whenever they establish a connection. So this was a quick video on FS logics deployment in WVD. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.